The one that I want to talk about in a little bit of detail is pericardiocentesis. Why do I want to talk about it in detail? Well, none of us do this a lot. When the time comes that we need to do it, we want to have ourselves set up for success the best way possible. And often if we're thinking about doing this in the hospital or in the emergency department, it's kind of between life and death if we're doing it. So let's try to do it right and we can use ultrasound to help us be more confident and do it successfully and safely. I'm going to go over my preferred technique. This has not been well documented in randomized control trials, but I will tell you this technique I'm going to go over is supported by the way the skills translate from all of the other ultrasound guided procedures. And there's some pluses that I think outweigh some of the other negatives that go through this. So the way I recommend, the way I like to do this is I use the safety synthesis catheter that I'll show you. I identify the target and guide the needle with a curvilinear probe and I approach from the apex in a parasternal long axis-ish kind of orientation using an in-plane dynamic needle guidance approach. And we'll talk that through a little bit. So why do I like this catheter? The main reason I like this catheter is because it's pretty much available every emergency department I've ever worked in. It's pretty much always available in every hospital I've been in. So I think it's a good option. This is less critical to me. If you're a micro puncture kit kind of person, then I think that's fine. You use that. If all you had at your disposal was a central line kit, a central line kit would work in a pinch as well. A couple things I like about these, it's got a nice long catheter. So even in big patients, it's always going to give you enough length to access their fluid. It's got this little retractable blunt tip that helps increase the safety a little bit possibly. It's a nice simple setup and then it's got the catheter that you can thread off and leave there and I definitely recommend if you're doing pericardiocentesis leave a catheter in place so that if you need to drain more fluid you can easily do that. And then the curvilinear probe the reason I like the curvilinear probe for this procedure, I've probably already done the echo with the phased array probe and decided, okay, that heart looks like it's in trouble. They've got echocardiographic and clinical signs of cardiac tamponade. Once I decide, I think I need to drain this, then I switch to the curvilinear probe because once I place it on the chest with the indicator towards the patient's right shoulder, the orientation that I see on the screen is very intuitive and it matches how the anatomical orientation is lined up. The next thing is with the curvilinear probe, I can see the needle and should be able to track it along its whole course in real time. Something that you probably can't do with the phased array probe. The phased array probe is just not equipped for good needle visualization. So those are my reasons I like the curvilinear probe and I'll show you a little bit of that. And then lastly, why do I like to come from the parasternal apical approach rather than our traditional landmark sub xiphoid approach? I think it's probably safer. If the patient is still awake at all, then it's probably less painful and should have fewer complications. And I think if we're doing this approach using ultrasound guidance, you're gonna be more successful. Most of the effusions that we're gonna drain in the hospital or the emergency department should be accessible from here. Although once you've looked and you've found an effusion, you're gonna to have to make that judgment. Is it accessible from the apical approach or not? Because if it's not, then you're not gonna go from here. But most of the ones that we're gonna drain in the emergency department or in the hospital are gonna be accessible from here. I already kind of alluded to the fact that this is a very intuitive way to do the procedure. If you already have your fundamental skills in ultrasound guided procedures, those skills translate directly to what we're talking about here. I already talked about the fact that we can see the needle with the curvilinear probe much better than we could with the phased array probe. And in a patient who is still maybe awake and participatory, you really just need local anesthetic to perform this comfortably and safely. You don't need sedation because you're not going to go through the diaphragm and cause a lot of pain. You don't have any risk of peritoneal puncture or going through the liver. You also, by coming way out to the apex, you're avoiding some of the complications like injury to the LAD or the internal mammary arteries. So those are all some of the reasons I like this apical approach. And just again, kind of a table going through some of those things. You'll see most of the drawbacks to this parasternal apical approach, maybe causing a pneumo or hitting an intercostal or these things. Point of care ultrasound actually helps you avoid all of these. You can avoid pneumothorax by making sure there's no lung sliding in your path, avoiding the intercostal arteries, try to stay on an upper surface of rib instead of near a lower surface. And then the LAD and the internal mammary arteries. Again, if we're all the way out at the apex and we're using point of care ultrasound to guide us just into the fluid, collection, we should be able to avoid all of those. So as compared to the traditional sub xiphoid approach that's blind, we've got these, you know, the diaphragm, we're going through the peritoneum, we may need sedation if they're awake at all, and it's not great to sedate somebody who's got clinical evidence of shock, so those are the reasons I don't like that one as much. So here's what this is going to look like. Now again, in this scenario, we've already looked at their heart with the phased array probe and decided, okay, there's a big effusion, we think there's tamponade, there needs to be clinical evidence of tamponade as well, and we've decided we're going to go ahead and we're going to drain this effusion. Here's what that's going to look like 
with the curvilinear probe from kind of Harrison along modified to come out towards the apex a little further. So we've got the apex of the heart here, the base is back here, this is our big fluid collection. If you haven't seen these a lot, this is the fat pad, and when it's got fluid around it, it looks like a weird mass on the edge of the heart, and it can be a little strange appearing if you've never seen it before, floating around in a large pericardial fusion, but that's just their normal fat pad that's much more visible with fluid all around it. But here's kind of our target. We want to aim with our needle in plane towards this fluid collection. So we come out towards the apex and then we're going to decrease the depth and it's going to look something like this because we're not evaluating the heart anymore. Now we're guiding a procedure to guide a needle into this fluid collection. So we slide out towards the apex, we decrease the depth because this is our target. That's what we want to see. Kind of look up and down for sliding, make sure you're not, there's no lung sliding in your path, which we don't see here. And then we're going to guide our needle. So we've got our probe indicators towards the patient's right shoulder-ish. And then we're using an in-plane needle technique to guide that needle towards our fluid pocket. And here you can see the length of the needle coming towards that fluid pocket. And as soon as we aspirate a little bit of fluid, we can thread the catheter off and drain that pericardial fusion. And if you like, you can inject a little bit of agitated saline to help you confirm you're in the right space. This is a little bit of a pathetic saline injection, maybe shake it up a little bit more, but we can still see the bubbles from our saline injection confirming we're in the pericardial space. But if we've guided our needle in real time, probably not that critical. That's pretty much pericardiocentesis, not something you're going to do a lot, but if it needs to be done, you can feel much more confident that you can do it effectively and safely with ultrasound guidance and hopefully incorporating some of the techniques and the approach that we just outlined.